2004. Elementary in 2004 or 5. Mm -hmm. I don't offer a hand. They said they wasn't functional. Well, school, schools of elementary wasn't functioning. No, those was where you could walk your children to school. That's right. And that's when you run those people away and close those schools, you close communities. And they did that process in the black community in Detroit and all across the nation. It's and a national program of the federal government. And now you hear a whole lot about this K through 12. Do you really want your five-year-old kindergarten child going to school with these 14 and 15 and 16-year-olds who's going through puberty and smelling their damn selves? Uh, you, you would want for your child to be in an elementary school. Well, what's going on in the school? We don't have a school system here no more. They tore it up. And uh, I can't blame the young parents, because the young parents has been under assault by the black intelligentsia, the black careers, political careers, and the ministers, the social prop of all corruption in the city. Now, so many people, they blame us, but it's like what you said earlier. When you close down schools, learning institutions, and our neighborhood because if I can remember back in Detroit way back we had so many damn schools every corner of this city that was learning institutions but when you close down a school you shut down what the neighborhood you had 253 schools in 1997 183,000 students now I understand that maybe 50,000 students and I don't I can't recall, I heard the other day how many schools. I don't think we got no more than about 60 or 70 schools, if we got that. And then, and then so we're, we're talking about many of our ministers in Detroit who came in for those public dollars Yes. for a private entity such as a damn charter school. Yeah. Well, the ministers start with Vance, or Reverend Vance. He was trained in Washington at the Pentagon. And they are trained to support capitalism. And the capitalist system was about to fold, looked like it was about to fold, and they decided the only way to save it was to move blacks out of the cities and to what they call black enclaves. That's what Ferguson, uh, uh, Missouri is. It's an enclave. Enclave means it's a territory that is surrounded by other nationalities that those in there. In Ferguson, it's surrounded by white, little, hostile communities that people work. Mm -hmm. So you put poor people inside uh, uh, that uh, a circle, in that, inside that circle, with no jobs. And when our young people steal a loaf of bread, he goes to private. This is the vision. This is the road they got us on. He goes to privatized prison, and through privatized prison, we have evolve back into going, you, there's change. Either change go forward or go backward. We have went back to commercial slavery like our foreparents. That's where the black leadership and the Sharptons, the Jesse Jacksons, and the NAACP have led us to back to the doorway of commercial slavery and our children will live eternally into nothing but misery. Well, tell me this. We have many people in our community who swear up and down. Uh, I hear them screaming it all the time. How I'm blessed, and God is good, and uh, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. You mean to tell me you don't need your goddamn schools? You don't need your city government? Well, uh, those are the people. With so many a people. Few people who uh, they are not the masses of people. The masses of people, such as 467,000. Uh, of people that's between the age of 16 to 64, 84,000 of them, that's 371,000 are jobless. They're not walking around talking that. A few retirees, and the retirees population is about 81,000 mm -hmm. of senior citizens over 65. Mm -hmm. And you, you got 30, 8% of them, mm -hmm. 38,000, I think that's, I don't got how many percent, 38,000 out of the 80 something thousand. Mm -hmm. They, the one, they're on, 38,000 on SSI, 
Mm-hmm. That's, they don't make enough on Social Security, so they got to get some public assistance to live. Yes. They're not talking that. You might have a few ex-factory workers uh, from, and got a pension, mm-hmm. and it's about 52 of uh, uh, 1,000 got a pension. They are walking around there still talking that slavery and talk, but they don't represent the masses at all. I guess I just kind of harp on that because I hear so much of it, uh, the part about And I hear preachers telling their congregations that you're blessed. And when I ride around the city of Detroit, I don't feel too blessed when I just look at the conditions. And, and, and I know we did not uh, cause it. And so with that, with the emergency management that we had into our school board and, and in our city government, uh, then I, our right to vote was taken away. Uh, our democracy uh, and so it's leaving me feeling like we're going backwards I feel like we're in slave status what do you think about uh, uh, our democracy a loss of democracy I would think that people would be alarmed about this we haven't had the right of, uh, the, the integrity of our vote since Jackie Kerb is in office oh. uh, they have if you go down there and vote no the next day your vote is yes Yes. They changes at the city clerk's office. That's the most important office that have to took everything from the people of Detroit was the city clerk's office. And so therefore, democracy, we don't have no democracy, especially when it comes to voting, mm-hmm. unless we take over the clerk's office. But if we take over the clerk's office, what are we going to rule? All the departments are regionalized. Detroit is just Detroit in name only. Three, uh, every department is regionalized and the jobs are in suburban hands and the blacks who were working for the city is, is not working no more. And the ones who's working for the water department, about 1,600 of them, they will be laid off because they done took all the suburban, it's got control, so they're going to have whites out there working. And, the, and they done narrowed us down in here with our own water department. And so therefore you won't have nothing but a few token a few that's going to be working so you have a whole lot of unemployment and more crime yes and it was not us who did that at that council wasn't that council who voted it was and let me say this the whites have never took nothing from us since 94 everything was gave away without our vote the state would pass a law violating the constitution of michigan the Constitution of Michigan, Article 4, Section 29, says if any law made by the state affects a, a community, that community must have a vote on it. Yes. The people and the, the, and it, and the, the legislator in Lansing must have two-thirds vote. Then when it comes to us, we vote the vote on it. But they make a law and say city council is the only one can vote on it. And that's how they violated the fourth uh, article and t- uh, section 29 of the Constitution and took everything from us that we paid for with our money. It's really been armed robbery by the city council in cahoot with the state uh, of government. And we should know we was there. And, you know, we try to get out here in the public and and we oftentimes try to inform the public of what we experience. We get to see the ugly side of council, the ugly side of the school board. When we, we see those council of Baptist preachers coming in there trying to get a contract and always on the take, we get to see the ugly side of them the way they talk to us. Uh, so, what would well, what would else say, should what else should the public uh, I know? Would say this. Only two times since I've been in the struggle. When I was at Dodge, Maine in 60s, and 68 we had a strike. Mm-hmm. We had a strike and we involved all the rank and file in Dodge, Maine. Mm-hmm. The next time you had the public involved, mm-hmm. when they killed Malice Green mm-hmm. in the early 90s, and I led the car caravan and John Arnold's uh, over the radio got the other masses of people, of the ordinary people of Detroit, mm-hmm. they forced for the first time a white police goes to jail for killing a black person. Yes. So that the only and since then, the activists was actually start. They start buying up activists in '67 after '67 riot. New Detroit start buying up activists, and they bought up the activists. And the activists since that time, their major struggle was go to city council, line up in the hall. 
city council increased the police, and we say no, and city council vote yes, and that's how they took everything. And they kept going to city council, but they wouldn't go to the public and inform the public. The activist is just as guilty as a more guilty then because they pretend they was the fighter and friends of the people, but they never went to the people. They stood in front of the spirit of Detroit and talked about a rally. He ho, I ain't gonna take it no more. But they never went in the neighborhood to organize the people like they did in Montgomery, like they did in every country. The fighters always went to the people. And King said, anytime you got a struggle to to reform society and you don't have people with you, mm -hmm. then you just uh, uh, operate out of token improvements. Well, that's what we've been. Well, that's what we've been doing for the past 20 years. That's we've what been, we've been doing. We've, we've been, been fighting, and we've been, and, and we've been leading by example. We've been trying to wake people up, but they really weren't listening to us. But one day they will. Well, uh, the people was the, the people. If unless you got a news media. The people don't know what we're doing downtown. That's right. In the neighborhood. They don't even know what's going on. Only way they would know, we had to go to people. And I'm saying, we never, as an activist, have never went to the people. And in that form, they have been just as guilty. Every last group. Tell me this, Mr. Town. They have been guilty of, 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 of keeping the people right. uh, 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 blind to what's going on and not organize people. Let me give you one other blind thing. Blind is the operative Lord. word. One other thing. Just this past, since May, the water company say I'm going to cut off water to 154,000 households and start cutting off 3,000 a week. Right. They was lined it up around three buildings on East Six Mile, Randolph downtown, and on Grand River near the, uh, the uh, 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 Greenfield. Mm -hmm. Not one activist right. came out to organize the people and prove that the activists was intentionally not to organize the people and they shot them in force. So they are worse than the ministers. They are worse than the city council because they fooled people that they were uh, of the friends of the people and all of them are 501c3 and they get paid for the cooperation. They never had a job and they got home and sent their kids to college. I have a question. Um, you made mention earlier about, right, about for the first time there were two racist white police from the city of Detroit who got put in jail uh, for uh, murdering Malice Green. And we all remember that it was very much like what happened out there in what, uh, California. I forget his name, Rodney King. Rodney King. And uh, as a result of that, we noticed how uh, the most efficiently ran uh, black uh, recorder's court that we had in Detroit was closed shortly thereafter. Was there any kind of a connection uh, to that? The fact that we actually put two white police who was racist, redneck pigs, and they murdered this man viciously. The loss of recorder's court, was that a result of those, the conviction of those two white police? I have never been convinced of that because I know what made them do that. It was the people. We. I led the caravan. We had a vote on 24th and 1. What we want to do. And I said, let's go down and, and uh, uh, protest at Frank Murphy Hall of Justice. Uh, Benny White was an artist. I didn't know him. He the one painted uh, the picture. And he voted with me. His daughter was my girlfriend for a long time. Mr. Okay. Benny White. She was an artist and I'm an artist. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Benny White, if you go up into his attic, he's got a million paintings up there. He okay. was an exceptional artist. Well, that's artist. how... Uh, we organized on 24th Street. I didn't have at that time no right license plate on my car. I didn't have no driver's license. And I started out and I met John Arnold at South uh, East Detroit mm -hmm. and he put it on the radio. And when we got down there in the car, car caravan and park, I seen people come from everywhere. They could, the police couldn't move their cars. Right. Nothing could roll. So that's what made the, the, the prosecutor who's now no good, uh, Kim Worthy, oh. win. Because we was out there in such great numbers, mm -hmm. it scared them. And that's the reason they, they uh, was prosecuted. Not because court is court. So and those judges 
and record us court. That was a part of the process of removing us out of the city. That's right. I